So part two for self-assessment on hips is looking at how much hip extension range of motion you have. So a very easy way that we can do this is just from a half kneeling position like this. Brace your abs, think about flexing your glutes and trying to push your hip into as much extension as you can get. You usually find a really tight, tight, tight quad and hip flexor in through the front. And if you feel like you can get into a position where you have greater hip extension just by pushing into it a little bit without getting any low back rounding happening, go as far into that range as you can. So for me, that's right about here. I'm pretty much locked at neutral when it comes to hip extension. I've got great ability to get into flexion to a certain point, but my extension has always been limited and I don't think there's much that I can do in that specific range of motion. Now if I wanted to, I could take some of the pressure off that hip and go into a position where the knee isn't being flexed nearly as much, and then I can work on just pushing down into it. But again, you can see my hip doesn't really get much past extension, so I'm using down pressure without the same tension on the hip flexor or on the quad, and I don't really get much further than that. So that's the end of my hip extension range of motion, which means that my femur and the acetabulum are more antiverted in a forward position versus retroverted in a backwards position. If my, if my acetabulum was angled more posteriorly in that retroverted spot, I'd have really great extension, but I wouldn't have that much flexion. If I'm more antiverted, I'd have great ability to go into a flexion range of motion, but my extension would be very limited. So that's two simple tests that you can use to be able to determine whether or not you have more of an antiverted or retroverted femur, and also what the shape of your hip socket looks like. 